Good day, my friends, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Daily Torah Broadcast, a ministry of the Messianic Discipleship Institute. Remember, you can always visit us online at mymdi.org and download previous episodes of the Daily Torah Podcast. If you're not a Daily Torah channel subscriber, click the subscribe button so you never miss a single episode. Today, we continue our Daily Torah series on God's plan for humanity leading up to the fall holy days and beginning the new Torah cycle. Enjoy the series and have a blessed holy day season. Good day, my friends, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Daily Torah Broadcast, our ministry of the Messianic Discipleship Institute. Today we are in part 28 of our series on God's plan for humanity, and as always, I pray you've been enjoying this series so far, and remember, you can always visit us at mymdi.org. Yesterday, we discussed further about the mark of the beast and how we can prepare for the return of Yeshua the Messiah. I know this topic can be a little unsettling for some, but the scriptures are very clear on how these events are to be played out, and when we have a deep understanding of God's plan for humanity through His holy days, it helps prepare us as we build our faith on a strong foundation, as Yeshua tells us in the book of Luke chapter 6. He says, But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my saying and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep, and laid the foundation on the rock, and when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently against the house, and could not shake it, because it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth, or on the sand, without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently against it, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great." Well, today, my friends, I want to continue with our discussion on this process of redemption and how Yeshua himself will come and save humanity from destroying itself. Before Yeshua returns, there will be a one-world government in place led by a strong political leader called the Antichrist and a global religious leader called the False Prophet. Together, they will try to cause all people of the earth to worship them and receive their mark and their allegiance to them, which is actually pledging pledging allegiance to Lucifer, whose whole plan and goal from day one has been to replace God and to be worshipped as God. But my friends, once we have been called by the Father and have accepted that calling and accept His Son Yeshua HaMashiach as our Savior, and we repent of our sins, we're immersed and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, we stay faithful to Him until death or of His coming, Our mortal bodies are resurrected or changed into incorruptible, glorious bodies, becoming the true sons of God, which is what this holy day, this Yom Teruah, Feast of Trumpets, pictures. Do you truly understand the tremendous calling and gift you have been given? It is at this time that all who have been called and lived will be resurrected. We will see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Moses and David and Solomon, all the prophets, the apostles, and other believers, both small and great. What a wonderful family reunion this is going to be. But first, there is the business of bringing a forced peace to the earth, binding Hasatan, cursed be he, Satan, and preparing the marriage supper, which is pictured by the holy days that come after this one. So the psalmist puts it this way. David says, For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. He subdues nations under us and peoples under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us, the glory of Jacob, whom he loved. God has got up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a shofar. Sing praise to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises, for God is the king of all the earth. 
Sing praises with understanding. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people are gathered together, the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is greatly exalted. Wow, that's a tremendous psalm. That's Psalm 47. When you get a chance, go back and reread it. The psalmist is telling us about what, how this day is pictured and how it's going to come to pass. All nations will finally know who Yeshua is. All nations will be trodden underfoot that do not submit to him. On his return, the nations will actually fight against the Prince of Peace. But their lack of understanding will bring about their own defeat as they are trodden underfoot by the King of Kings. In Revelation 19, we see this portrayed. It says in Revelation 19, we'll pick it up in verse 11. It says, I saw the heavens opened and behold a white horse and he who sat on it is faithful and true and righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are a flame of fire and on his head are many crowns. He has names written and a name written which no one knows but he himself. He is clothed in a garment sprinkled with blood. His name is called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven followed him on white horses, clothed in white, pure, fine linen. And out of his mouth proceeds a sharp, double-edged sword, that with it he should strike the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod. And he treads the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of God. This is no baby lamb coming this time. This is the king of kings and the lords of lords. On his garment and on his thigh is a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. And I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the birds that fly in the sky, Come, come. Be gathered together to the great supper of God that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of those who sit on them, and all the flesh of men, both free and slave, and small and great. Remember, those are the ones who gave themselves to the mark of the beasts and followed this global end-time government, both slave and free and small and great, the kings and the captains, the mighty men and the poor men, common men, anyone who accepts the mark of the beast, this is where they end, at the great supper of God. And he continues, he says, I saw the beast in the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. They're actually going to fight against the King of Kings, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Son of God. It is at this time that Yeshua will begin the redemptive process of regathering the whole house of Israel and those who are grafted in, that's you and I, and we can read about this in Ezekiel. So let's see what Ezekiel says. Remember I told you the Old Testament um, is, is the new concealed and the, and the new is the old revealed. So let's look at Ezekiel 34 and let's pick it up in verse 11. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I myself, even I, this is the Lord speaking, even I myself will search for my sheep. Right? Yeshua is the, the, the shepherd, right? He says, I will search for my sheep and I will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered abroad, so I will seek out my sheep, and I will deliver them out of all the places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. I will bring them out from the peoples, and I will gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel." by the water courses and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountains of the height of Israel shall their fold be. There 
They shall lie down in a good fold, and on fat pasture shall they feed on the mountains of Israel. And I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will cause them to lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost, and I will bring back that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken, and will strengthen that which was sick, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. And he says, I will feed them in justice. And that's Ezekiel 34, verses 11 through 16. Yes, my friends, Yeshua is coming, and he will reign in righteousness and justice. He does not delight in slaying the wicked who are deceived by the evil one. They too, my friends, believe it or not, and we're going to get into this in the coming holy days because you see, this is why you got to understand all the holy days and how they picture God's plan for redemption of all humanity. Those who are slain in the wicked, they will have a time to accept him as Lord and Savior, but at a later time, which is covered in the holy days that follow Yom Teruah. You've heard of the great white throne judgment. Well, some will be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. There will be no second chance for them. But others who were deceived, it's possible that they will have a time. We we don't know exactly how it's going to play out because it does say that those who accept the mark mark of the beast that there's there's no forgiveness for them. But we'll see how it, how it plays out when the Lord returns. But there is a time coming, and we'll get into that in or later episodes. But I want to stop here for today. Go back and read Ezekiel 34 and and go through Revelation 19 and read Psalm 47. Read the Word of God. Don't just take my words for things. Go and read your scriptures. Let the Lord speak to your heart and to your soul. So until tomorrow, don't forget to share this message with your friends and family. Post it on social media. Let's spread this gospel of this good news of the kingdom throughout the world so that people have a hope and a chance so that they will not accept the mark of the beast. Wouldn't it be sad if your friends and family were deceived and accepted the mark of the beast and yet you did not share these words with them? That will come upon you, and that's a terrible thing. So I'm encouraging you, share this and let people know that a time of trouble is coming and that they need to prepare themselves so that they will not be deceived by this end time global world government that's about to come upon the earth. So until tomorrow, Shalom Aleichem, peace be with you. God bless and we'll see you tomorrow.